Hello, this is Sal Hamir, and in this video we will talk about fundamental considerations and concepts in developing tests or questionnaires. In my previous video, an introduction to many facet rash measurement, a lot of people complained that the video was too long. I mean, it was only three hours. I mean, was listening to me for three hours really, really that bad? I don't know. Anyway, um, when I got to about 100 views on YouTube, 20 people had already complained about how long the video was. Um, the other 80 views were just me re-watching the video over and over again to increase the number of views. So I've decided to make this video uh, a lot shorter. Um, the number one consideration in developing a test or a questionnaire is the fact that you are trying to observe and measure something that cannot be directly observed or measured. In the example of a test, you are testing, you know, something within their brain, their ability, their language abilities. Now, you have to do this indirectly. You cannot do it directly. It's not like, you know, measuring somebody's height or measuring how much something weighs or measuring speed, measuring temperature. These are all things you can measure directly. Um, Cognitive abilities, attitudes, emotions, beliefs, these are things that cannot be, you know they exist somewhere in the brain, but you can't put a tape measure around it, you can't put it on a scale to tell me how much it is. So we have to think of indirect ways of um, measuring this ability. Now, because we are doing um, indirect in terms of logic, what we're doing, what we're relying on is deductive and not inductive logic. You know, what is the difference between them? Well, inductive logic, um, if I was to say to you the famous example, every man is mortal, Arsene Wenger is a man, therefore Arsene Wenger is mortal. This is an inductive argument. The conclusion, Arsene Wenger is mortal, follows with certainty the premises you know every man is mortal and Arsene Wenger is a man there is no way that the conclusion could be wrong if the premises are true okay now with um, deductive uh, deductive logic it's a bit different you know it works the other way around let's suppose I see a white swan and then I see another white swan and another white swan and another and another and then I come to the conclusion because swan 1, 2, 3, up to 1,000 that I observed were all white, therefore, conclusion, therefore, every swan is white. Now, this conclusion follows logically, but it doesn't follow with certainty. There's always an element of uncertainty. The first thing you need to consider when developing a test or questionnaire is whatever the outcome whatever results you get there's always an element of uncertainty you cannot assume that you know that the, the results you get accurately measure the construct you wish to measure and in a way where the inferences you make follow with certainty so um, because of this uncertainty because of the nature of you know, these abilities that cannot be measured directly or observed directly, we need to provide evidence. When we claim that this test that we have developed measures this ability or this questionnaire measures this construct, we need to provide as much evidence as possible to support these claims. The more evidence we have, the better. So, in essence, you know, the, a test or a questionnaire is an attempt to measure a construct that is, you know, something that cannot be observed directly in our brains like language ability, mathematical ability, reasoning um, ability, um, attitudes, beliefs, emo motivation, emotions and things like that. We know they exist, but we cannot measure them directly. And the purpose of any um, test assessment questionnaire is, in essence, um, to gather information and make decisions. And these decisions will have consequences. Now, we do this organically every day without thinking. When I'm teaching, you know, in class, 
I'm explaining something. I'm explaining the concept of validity. And I'm looking at my students. I'm making eye contact. I'm you know, looking you know, into their eyes. I'm looking at their body language. And I'm gathering information just from their looks. If they're all you know, nodding their heads and smiling, I assume that you know, they've un they understand what I'm saying and I move to the next point. So what I did there is I gathered information. I made a decision to move to the next point, and that decision there was a consequence for the students. You know, if they didn't understand the point, then they moved on to another point. But if I'm looking at them, engaging eye contact, and I see them like, oh, what? I understand that they don't quite grasp what I'm explaining to them, and I'll just explain it again. So again, I gathered information, I made a decision, and that decision had consequences. Um, you do this, you know, uh, when you do a driving test for your license, you know, you take a test, they put you in, you know, a, it's an, in an environment that hopefully resembles what, you know, it is like driving on the street and they gather information about your driving ability and they make a decision about, you know, whether you are good enough to drive on the road. And that decision will have a consequence for other people who are on that road. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're a lousy driver, then, you know, you could be putting a lot of people's lives in danger. Um, another example would be, you know, when you buy any products or you go on a diet. You know, you hear about this diet and all the, all the claims that, okay, you're going to lose, you know, um, 20 pounds in one month and blah, blah. And you, and you follow the diet for one month. You gather information from that diet by actually trying it. That's you know the sort of you know information that you've gathered, and you look at you know what happened, you know the kind of changes that happened to your body, and you make a decision. You know, should I follow this diet? Should I continue following this diet, or should I just quit this diet and move to another diet? And obviously, following that diet, you know, has consequences for you know you and uh, your well-being. So. Um, that's in essence what you're doing basically with a test or a questionnaire. You want to gather some sort of information. If it's a test, you want to gather some sort of information about, you know, test takers' ability. You know, in language testing, you want, you know, some sort of, um, you know, you need to specify what ability you are trying to measure in particular. Uh, in a questionnaire, it's the same thing. Like we said, you know, you, you want to measure their attitude, their beliefs, their emotions or something like that. Now, um, we mentioned that because the, um, the, the nature of, our, uh, of the language testing and the nature of testing in general and questionnaires is that it's indirect and it's deductive, we have to provide as much evidence. And this is in essence what validity is. Um, there are basically two types of evidence that you can look for, you can provide when um, constructing a test or a questionnaire. You know, um, evidence that you provide before constructing the test and evidence that you um, provide after. Now I'm not going to have enough time to mention all the types of evidence. I'll just look at you know some of the evidence that you should provide before administering a test or a questionnaire. Um, I've mentioned construct and it's the thing that we are trying to measure, the underlying ability that cannot be observed directly. Um, the first thing you need to do is really define your construct. You need to have a very, very clear definition of what is the construct, what is it that you're trying to measure in your test or your questionnaire. Now, in a, in a test, you want to make sure, if it's a language test, you want to make sure that your construct, your construct definition comes from either uh, the syllable that you're teaching, that you're using to teach your students, or from a needs analysis, that is when, you know, you study the type of language that is used by a group, say, like a pilot. What sort of language do pilots, you know, need and use? And then you construct a test based on the, the, that, the needs analysis. Or, you know, the test could be based on a theory of language ability, language acquisition, and things like that. So it's uh, theoretical. In a questionnaire, you want to develop, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, your construct definition is related strongly to what the literature says about the construct. So, for example, um, you know, if you're measuring motivation, you need to be very clear what the literature, you need to really do your homework and know what motivation means, uh, the different types of motivation, what it entails, how people have measured you know motivation before and then build your questionnaire on you know that type of um, knowledge um, 
when defining a construct and then you know the, um, developing a test or a questionnaire, two of the biggest threats to the validity of your um, your instrument, whether it's a test or a questionnaire, one thing is called constructs irrelevant or construct irrelevant variants, and the other is construct underrepresentation. Construct irrelevant variants basically is when there is, if it's in a test, when there's variance in test scores that is unrelated to the test or the construct, sorry, that you wish to measure. So say, for example, that you've got a reading test and you want to measure general comprehension. Um, you ask them a question that people can answer based on prior knowledge. Say, for example, you ask them, what is the capital of Lebanon? Um, some students can answer that without comprehending the text or the, sorry, the, the actual text or the, um, the reading passage. Um, uh, they, they answer with prior knowledge. They could answer, you know, a, a question that could be answered with cultural knowledge is, you know, construct irrelevant. Um, if somebody for, you know, um, all intents and purposes understood the text, but they didn't understand the question. There was something weird about the wording of the question and they did not answer the, uh, the, the question. Now, is that, they failed, they got you know, a zero on that, um, that item, but is that zero a result of them not comprehending how the construct, or is it because of something unrelated to the construct, the, the, the weird wording of the test item? Um, other ways that you can get um, construct um, irrelevant variants is when the test favors you know one group of test takers. Say it's you know it's the items on the test uh, uh, favor boys more than girls, or favor you know people one race or ethnicity more than another, or from one um, academic field to another where they can use you know you know the their whatever background they have, and that, that gives them an advantage you know, compared to the other group or the other test takers. Um, with construct underrepresentation, basically, as the name um, suggests, uh, say you're measuring, again, reading, general reading, um, you know, the ability to um, uh, a general comprehension of a text, a written text. Um, suppose you have a test with only one item, you know, is that sufficient? Can you make, you know, can you feel confident in saying, yes, this student can read, um, can uh, generally comprehend a uh, passage based on one question only? Um, with, a, um, uh, with a questionnaire, suppose you give, um, suppose you're measuring, uh, say, motivation, and uh, all your items, your construct is motivation, and all the items are only one type of motivation, extrinsic motivation, and none of the items focus on intrinsic motivation. That is, pro uh, you know, it, it, the, the, the question here underrepresents the construct. You would either have to put other items in that um, take, into in take intrinsic motivation into account, or narrow your construct definition and say, well, I'm measuring extrinsic motivation and nothing more. Uh, going back, sorry, I forgot, going back to construct irrelevant variants, another example would be like um, raters. Say you write an essay and um, two raters uh, give it a score, one gives it a full mark and the other gives it half you know, the mark. You've got variants in scores that are unrelated to your writing ability. One rater was strict and they gave you a very low score, another rater was more lenient and they gave you a very high score. So um, that's something I discussed in my previous video, an introduction to manifested rash measurements. So if you're interested in that, please watch the three hour long video. Um, so um, to, to sum up, um, uh, Buckman and Palmer in their book, um, Language Assessment in Practice, when talking about interpretations we make on um, test scores, they focus on um, five things that you really want to look into. You want to make sure that the scores on the test, or even the questionnaire in this case, uh, in this case, are meaningful in relation to the construct. You want to make sure they're impartial; they don't favor one group over another. You want to make sure that they are generalizable to, you know, um, uh, a target language use domain, or you know, uh, what, whatever it is you want to generalize the results on from the questionnaire. You want to make sure that the um, that the interpretations are relevant and sufficient, that you have enough um, 
that you have enough items to say and feel confident that yes, I, I strongly believe that you know I've got enough evidence here to suggest this. Um, the last thing or the most perhaps the most important consideration that you want to make is practicality. Now you can be the greatest tester in the world, you can be the greatest you know um, questionnaire developer in the world, but you need to be practical. You need to be practical in terms of you know uh, resources and material and knowing you know who the participants or the test takers are going to be and making sure that you have you know uh, enough. Um, participants if it's a questionnaire and um, practicality you know cost how much does it cost you know it, 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 it's useless to you know develop something really fancy when you don't have enough money to um, actually go through with your plan of developing the test or the questionnaire or you develop a computer adaptive test and you, are, you want to give it to students in an environment that they don't use computers and they don't even have computers in the school or the, the, um, the, the setting that you are using. So this is basically an, a, a very broad introduction and overview of some of the important and fundamental considerations that you need to make when developing a test or questionnaire. I do plan to make future videos where I discuss everything I mentioned here in a lot more detail and, and a lot of other things and I'll also focus on the type of evidence that you need after the test. So um, if you have any questions, comments or any suggestions of topics that are related to um, developing tests and questionnaires that you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the, um, in the uh, comments section below and uh, I will try to um, take these into consideration. Thank you very much.